because that is what I kind of want to do with this video. See how many of these books I will pick up in the next year. And if I don't, then bye bye bye. <laughs> My name is Sabine and we are standing for today's video, which means we're gonna do something interactive with my bookshelves. <laughs> Today, I will be looking at my shelves and checking which books I want to unhaul, but I will only be unhauling these books if I haven't read them within the next year because apparently I have some kind of unhealthy attachments to books. <laughs> my room is just like so with them and I have moved actually I do have like a dorm in Utrecht but I don't have my bookshelves there so if I do have those I will have a little bit more space for my books but as you will see there is like a complete pile of books that I've recently hauled and I just I cannot fit them anywhere. I will be just having a look, kind of seeing if the books that are on my shelves are bringing me any type of joy or any like want to pick them up sometime in the near future. And if they completely don't, then they will go on the one year unhaul pile, if that makes any sense. But before we are gonna get into this very exciting unhaul video, let's talk about today's sponsor first which is book of the month <laughs> book of the month is a super popular fast growing online bookish surface which is perfect for readers like you and i their mission is to promote new and emerging authors at an affordable price this way they help readers discover new books that they will love how their subscription works is that every single month their team vets hundreds of different books and they pick a top five that you can choose from and this way you have to spend less time researching and you have more time to read all of the books. Book of the month is also risk-free. You can skip any month if you don't like any of the picks or you can choose some of their add-ons. So the two books that they sent me for the month of November that are the add-ons that you can choose from are My Body by Emily Ratajkowski and Will by Will Smith and Mark Manson. But do know that book of the month only ships to US addresses. I am Dutch. So just to be clear, they do not ship internationally. But since a lot of you guys who watch my videos are actually from the US, they wanted to work with me again and I'm so thankful for that. And the best thing about Book of the Month is that they have the most affordable best price for new release hardcover fiction. And if you use my personal code, Sabine, you will get your first Book of the Month box for just $9.99 sense, which is so cheap. <laughs> As you guys might be able to tell, my battery died, so I had to charge my camera. But now I will talk to you guys about the five books that you could choose from for the Book of the Month November box. I will show you the books and voiceover Sabine will tell you exactly what they are about. So the first one that I have here is The Family by Naomi Krupitsky and Sabine. Tell us what it's about, girl. Oh, hi, Sabine. Well, The Family is a historical fiction set in mid-century Brooklyn. It's a story of a decades-long friendship between two women bound by the sins of their fathers. Okay, that sounds pretty good. <laughs> now let's go on to the second one, which I love the title of this one, by the way. It is How to Marry Keanu Reeves in 90 Days by K.M. Jackson. Ooh, November's romance pick. In this one, two friends take a wild road trip to stop the world's most eligible bachelor from making a big mistake, namely getting married. I mean, doesn't that just sound wonderful? Next up, we have A Little Hope by Ethan Joella. A Little Hope is an ode to the beauty of the everyday. This novel traces the losses, loves, and dreams of a small Connecticut town. It seems like it's gonna be a very impactful read. Ooh, another like murder mystery book. I always love that they have these in their boxes and that is The Collected by Ellison Galen. Hell hath no fury like a mother scorned in this propulsive story of rage and justice and the limits of revenge. <laughs> I mean, I'm just creeped out by that description already. And then my number one pick for November is this one, The Keeper of the Night. I don't know why I sang that, but okay. <laughs> By Kylie Lee. Baker. Ren Scrabaro is on a journey to impress the goddess of death in this riveting story of monsters, magic, and reapers. Doesn't that sound intriguing? I mean, I'm just like in the mood for another like YA fantasy series and this one just sounds epic. Those were all of their November picks. Thank you so much again to Book of the Month for sponsoring today's video and do not forget to use my code Sabine to get your first Book of the Month box for just $9.99. <laughs> Now let's go on to this like possible unhaul video. <laughs> okay, let's do this, shall we? I'm gonna 
kind of take you on the journey by going through my shelf. So come closer. Oh, hello. <laughs> you probably won't be able to see like all of the books, but I will give like little close up shots of it as well. Ooh, maybe I can do that with my phone. Have like a double camera. So these are my shelves. They are extremely full as you can see. Uh, and my room is a mess. So please don't look at that. Okay. First of all, the dream thieves right here in the corner is a weird story because I bought a secondhand hardcover copy and then I got an arc. Um, I haven't read book one. I don't know when I'm going to get to it, but I'm saving that one. So the first one that I see is this one. Ooh, I cannot stand here because my room is stuffed, but that is Everless by Sarah Holland. And I kind of feel hesitant for like putting this on the list because I actually received this one in a fairy loot box a couple of years ago. So I believe it's like a special edition and it is a fantasy duology right now. I'm not too sure about that. In the land of Sempera, the rich control everything, even time. Ever since the age of alchemy and sorcery, hours, days, and years have been extracted from blood and bound to iron coins. The rich live centuries, the poor bleed themselves dry. Jules and her father are behind on their rent and low on hours. To stop him from draining himself to clear their depths, Jules takes a job at Everless, the grand estate of the cruel girling family. There, Jules encounters danger and temptation in the guise of a girling heir, Rowan, who is soon to be married. But the web of secrets at Everless stretches beyond her desire and the truths she must uncover will change her life forever and possibly the future of time itself. I mean, the premise sounds so cool. It does, <laughs> but it's just like another YA fantasy that I don't know if I want to like start it, if I want to continue on with the series. I believe it has like pretty good ratings. I think we have to put this on the list. But maybe during like the whole of this video, you guys can tell me whether or not the books that I'm putting on this unhaul list, like maybe I should give priority to read them, some of them, because that is what I kind of want to do with this video, see how many of these books I will pick up in the next year. And if I don't, then bye bye bye. <laughs> okay, so I don't think I see another book on this one. I know it's full, so you cannot really see it, but I'm... <sighs> okay. On my little like bluish shelf, I picked up Made You Up by Francesca Zappia. This author, I have heard so many amazing things about and especially from Eli Eliza's Monsters or something. I also own that book and I really want to pick that one up. This is one of her earlier releases. Immediately when I flip through it, like big letters and like the pages are super small. So this should be a quick read and it doesn't really say a lot of the synopsis. I feel like this book is gonna tackle like a mental health issue. So like having voices or like hearing voices by yourself in your mind. I don't know how to phrase that correctly. But besides that, there is no plot description anywhere on the book. I don't know what to expect, but it does sound like a contemporary that's like right up my alley because I really enjoy reading uh, contemporary books that focus a lot on like mental health issues. It will be on the list because I have had this book on my shelves for maybe five years and I've never given it like any thought of like, oh, okay, now I really need to pick it up. But also I haven't heard anyone talk about this book, maybe in the past when I became obsessed with book two, but that's been a while. And by putting it on this list, I'm forcing myself to pick it up. Yeah, okay, I see another good contestant for this one. Oh god, it's like on the bottom of a lot of books, so it's difficult to grab. I have a feeling I won't be reading this book within the next year, <laughs> but we shall see. And that is This Book Is Not Yet Rated by Peter Buck Nanny. And I bought this one a couple of years ago on Amazon because there was like this huge Black Friday sale. And back in the day, I still buy a lot of books right now. So I'm kind of lying about this statement. But back in the day, I was so bad. Whenever like a book was just super cheap, I immediately added it to my card and didn't really check out the synopsis or the ratings, which I do do a lot right now. But I am a huge movie fan. And this is a contemporary book that takes place in like the cinemas or... <sighs> Honestly, <laughs> that's all I knew about it. And I know it has like pretty decent ratings. It, it might be a really fun contemporary book, but it also might just not be it. Okay, I may have just grabbed three additional books. <laughs> Two that I'm a bit hesitant about. It's just that you guys know I like starting series, but finishing them is just like a task that's impossible for me to complete. And I have so many series that I actually like need to finish already that these are the first ones in a series. And I have heard like good things about them. 
It's just that I haven't picked them up. So the first one is The Winner's Curse by Marie Rutkowski. I have the ugly covers that look so much like the Throne of Glass series. Again, picked this up when it was like really, really cheap. And oh my gosh, what is it about? They were never meant to be together. As a general's daughter, 17 year old Kestrel enjoys an extravagant and privileged life. Aaron has nothing but the clothes on his back and Kestrel makes an impulsive decision that binds Aaron to her. Though they try to fight it, they can't help but fall in love. Okay, a fantasy romance. In order to be together, they must betray their people, but to be loyal to their countries, they must betray each other. Set in a new world, The Winner's Curse is a story of rebellion, jewels, ballroom dances, wicked rumors, dirty secrets, and games where everything is at stake. And the gamble is whether you will keep your head or lose your heart. I mean, uh, back in the day, like a couple of years ago when this was super popular, I heard amazing things about it, but like it's yet another YA trilogy just like Caravel by Stephanie Garber. And this one came out in 2016. I'm pretty sure. And then I pre-ordered this book because I was so excited. Also like the cover is stunning. This is again a YA fantasy trilogy, but it mostly like takes place in this circus. And I really do love circus setting books, I guess. I think I've only read like one or two, but I really quite enjoyed those. I've just never felt the extreme urge to pick this series up and also have heard mixed opinions. So I know a lot of people who absolutely adore this series, so they might be watching this video right now being like, Sabine, you better pick this book up or else. <laughs> so I'm kind of like hesitant to put these on the list. I would put this one more on the list than Caraval just because I'm more curious about it. But I'm definitely putting Onyx and Ivory by Mindy Arnett on the list. Again, another fairy loot book that it didn't really, really pick my interest back then already. It is also like a huge book. I do think it deals with dragons as well, but I'm not too sure. Ooh, yeah, okay, so it does deal with dragons. So that does sound cool, but I have never in the three, four years that I've owned this book have been like, oh my gosh, this sounds amazing. I hate the way that I said gosh, but we're just gonna roll with it. <laughs> I believe it's a duology and I have never heard anyone talk about it. So it will be put on the list, but if you have read it, please let me know. They call her Traitor Kate. It's a title Kate Brighton inherited from her father after he tried to assassinate the High King of Rhyme. Cast out of the nobility, she now works for the Royal Courier Service, which I think is like a nice thing. Like I, I see that being a cool thing in this book. I don't think I'm making any sense. <laughs> only the most skilled write for the relay and only the fastest survive for when night falls, the night drakes, deadly flightless dragons come out to hunt. Fortunately, Kate has a secret edge. She is a wilder, born with forbidden magic that allows her to influence the minds of animals. The more that I read the synopsis, the cooler that it sounds, but it's gonna go on the list <laughs> because I haven't picked it up in four years. Okay, and those are the books that I am putting on this unhaul pile from this shelf. Now let's go on to these books. <laughs> but first I have to put my book, th th books back. <laughs> Ugh, I want to sit here, but then I'm too small. And now you guys are too small. Okay, let's, okay, no, a little higher. Oh, this actually looks like a very cozy filming nook, don't you think? Okay. These are books that I have recently hauled. So none of these are going on the list. Okay, I can see all of them right now, but I will just show them to you when I see a book that I'm like, okay, this has to go on the unhaul list. Immediately, <laughs> I see a couple of them. I'm just gonna grab all the books that I see on here that I don't want anymore, maybe. <sighs> Oh my gosh, I have so many actually. I'm just gonna get right into it. So first off, I have Beyond a Darkened Shore by Jessica Leake. <laughs> Again, very loot book I received in a box that I have not been super excited for in the last three to four years. I believe it's like a Scandinavian fantasy with Vikings. I just don't know if like Viking fantasy is my type of thing. Next is The Surface Breaks by Louise O'Neill. I actually put this one on my list of one star predictions, which I thought was a super fun video to make. Basically the only reason why I've been holding on to this one is the cover mostly because it's so detailed and beautifully um, illustrated, but it is like a, supposed to be a feminist little mermaid 
book. But I have read from a couple of the reviews that is actually like not super feministic, if that's even a word. I have a feeling that it will just not be my cup of tea, that I probably won't like the writing style, that I think it's gonna be a very superficial book. I might be wrong here, so correct me in the comments if I am. I just don't have any strong feelings with this one. Next up we have Truth Witch by Susan Dennard, or Dennard? I don't know how you are supposed to pronounce this author's name, unfortunately. This is a super well-known YA fantasy trilogy, I'm about to say. But also my copy that I have is just like a super old library copy. It's just dirty. And I mean, I have so many YA fantasies and I feel like perhaps I'm losing a little bit of interest in them. Or like, I think the premise sounds so cool, but then I never actually pick one up. And I don't know why. Maybe it's because it takes me a longer time to get into fantasy books. That just makes me kind of like step back from them more easily, hence why I pick up more contemporary fiction or literary fiction or whatever. But I don't read enough fantasy because I do like it. It's just always like a little barrier that I have to cross or something. I think perhaps if I want to pick up like a YA fantasy series, I would not give my priority to this one. Ooh, then we have this gigantic book. I don't even know why I bought it. Okay, I do know because Peru's project talked about this book so much and that is The Black Prism by Brent Weeks and do you see the size of this thing? I could kill someone with it. It is an adult fantasy series that deals with, I believe, the fact that colors can give you magic. I said that so hesitantly. <laughs> it's really popular, so I've heard, but it's just so huge. It's so big. The chapters aren't super long, so that is always nice when I see like a book that's as big as this and it has short chapters. Thumbs up for me, but never have I looked at my shelf and looked at this book and have been like, yes. I want to read you right now. Next up, another beautiful cover, but will I pick it up ever? And that is Vengeance Road by Erin Bowman. This is a Western duology. So it sounded amazing. The cover is absolutely fantastic. And I do really enjoy, actually, if you didn't know this about me, I really like gaming and I have loved Red Dead Redemption. And so I'm kind of hoping that in some way, shape or form, if I pick up this book, it will remind me of Red Dead Redemption and like Western movies. So I do like the setting idea, but I am gonna put it on the list. And then, oh my gosh, I think that this is so bad that I'm gonna put it here in this video. And that is the Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children series. I bought this book set a couple of years ago because Jesse from Jesse the Reader, he is obsessed with this series. Like if I see this box set, I immediately think Jesse. I mean, the covers look absolutely lovely and creepy and perfect for like the fall times. And it has like a mysterious island and abandoned orphanages, orphanages, orphanage, and a strange collection of very peculiar photographs. And I believe yeah, so like in between you also get to see these photographs as well. It's relatively short. It is just like a classic YA series here in the book community, but it's been on my shelf for five years. So I want to give the first book a go within the next year. Fingers crossed that that will happen because otherwise I may have to unhaul the whole unread box set of this one and it just it hurts my heart a bit <laughs> let's go on to the next shelf below it okay i only see one which is good and that is nocturna by mea montagne hopefully i'm pronouncing their name right i want to unhaul this one mostly because it is in dutch i am dutch if you didn't know already but i don't really read dutch books and i've never really been interested in this book but we went to like a bookish event in the netherlands and this one was in our goodie bag so because it was not as if i chose this book myself if i bought it myself and then i just like completely abandoned it like i did with the rest of them <laughs> this book is maybe a little bit less emotionally damaged than my other books I'm, I'm sorry, okay? I'm sorry. And then on the bottom shelf, which you can't see, but I will have a look right now. Number one is Jellico Road by Melina Marchetta. And I bought this one when it was on sale. And then I was like, oh, book, five euros, okay, in my cart, and let's pick it up. I believe this book is like a, around 15 plus years old. So it's kind of like an, a modern YA classic, I believe. I have no clue what it's about. To be honest, this is one of those books where I'm like, I, mm, I'm pretty sure I won't read it within the next year. And then the the other one is Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. This was again super cheap back when I bought it and the movie was about to come out. But I don't read classics. I never pick them up just because I'm already intimidated by the fact that it's called a classic and I haven't read a lot of like classic English literature. I have read some classic 
literature in Dutch and I absolutely hated that. So I always think that because I hated Dutch literature, I will immediately hate English literature. But I've also heard that this one is a little bit boring. I've also watched the movie already and I usually hate when people say this, but I love that movie so much and I just don't think that this one will like compare to it or will ever reach that same level of like, oh my gosh, I loved it. Okay, I don't have to be that aggressive with my books. And now let's go over to ooh, my TBR cart. Hello, this one is here. And my other bookshelf. But this is actually like my bookshelf full with favorites. So I don't need to look at that one actually. I don't know why I said that. Okay, this one was also in my one star predictions, which is the Sacrifice Box by Martin Stewart. This is like a 1980s paranormal horror book. And it reminds me a lot of like Stranger Things because it deals with like these five teenagers who go out into the woods and find this box. They each make a sacrifice saying that they will stay like committed to the box forever. And they make like a pact. But then four years later, something strange and like these weird things are happening. So they feel like someone possibly broke the pact that they made and that's all I knew. It sounds very mysterious, but the ratings are so, so low. And I don't read a lot of books at the moment because of how busy I am with uni. And then when I do read a book, I wanna be like, okay, this might actually be one of my new favorites, a book that I'm completely interested in. And that's the reason why I haven't picked this one up yet. I've recently hauled a lot of these. Okay, well, maybe this one, and that is The Zwendelprins by Rima Ori. I actually got this one from Leora because she read it. She really, really loved it, but it's like a Dutch book. And I know like Dutch writers are so necessary and a lot of people, including myself, don't read Dutch, but they read English. So the Dutch publishing industry has been kind of, I believe, declining over the past couple of years. So I should be supporting them, but it's just not my personal favorite way of reading books. The reviews that I have heard about this book are actually really good, but maybe it's just not something that really clicks with my interests. So it's going on the pile. Oh my gosh. Okay, so I went through the rest of the TBR card and let's say that the majority of these books fall under the same category, which I have already talked about with a couple of these books. And that is fairy loot books that I'm not really interested in anymore. So I have Heart of Thorns by Brie Barton. I don't know if this is like supposed to be a Sleeping Beauty retelling. I don't think so, but I'm not too sure. I mean, look at those pages. Like they do look super, super cool. Haven't heard amazing things about this one though. Then this is, I think one of the oldest fairy loot books that I own. And that is Forest of a Thousand Lanterns. This is a Snow White retelling but this is also like part of a series and i have never felt any interest for it to be honest then we have the hazelwood by melissa albert this one is super super popular a fantasy book about storytelling and then like actually those stories come true in real life was way more excited when this book just came out then we have wicked like a wildfire by lana popovic this is like a magical family and sisters who unearth an ancient curse that haunts at their line and them like trying to save each other. I never hear anyone talk about it. <laughs> I know that's like a really bad reason for not wanting to pick something up, but when you hear more about a certain bug, I mean, it just piques your interest and it makes you feel like more confident to pick it up. And a bug that has been in the fairy loot box very recently, I think somewhere in like March, I believe that is The Bright and the Pale by Jessica Rubinkowski. This is like a winter type of fantasy. So I might actually be picking it up this winter, but I've heard that it's just like an okay YA fantasy. And I don't really want to waste my time on okay books. And I try to limit that as much as possible. And then I think the last book that I have to talk about on this pile is Song of the Current by Sarah Tolkser. Again, a YA fantasy, but I thought that this one had to deal a bit more with like water magic or like a magical river, which sounded so cool. And I remember when I got this book, it came in the mail so damaged. Okay, these are 23 books that I need to read within the next year. Otherwise I will have to unhaul them. If you know that my reading pace is about like 25 to 45 books each year, yeah, you can guess that I will probably be unhauling a lot of these. And for some of them, I already have a feeling like, okay, I'm not gonna get to them within the next year. But then for some of them, I'm like, but what if I don't finish them within the next year and they would have actually been 
a really really great read so i hope that you guys enjoyed this video if i need to give any of these books a priority and maybe some of your favorites are in this pile then please let me know in the comments down below i'm always open to hear your thoughts and opinions and maybe i will actually be picking up some of these books very very soon let's pray let's hope okay if you guys enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up you can subscribe to my channel by clicking somewhere on the screen or on the button down below and hopefully i will see you guys in the next one Bye!